<laughs> Let's hope. I'm ready to pound them. Oh, yikes. Oh. Pause. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, fellas, what's happening, man? Good to see you all. Uh, Mike, apologies about last week. I got some badass flu, boy. I'll tell you what, it ripped through me from the head to toe. Had a great weekend, though. Uh, the boy had hockey up in Rochester. It was an amazing time. Um, he led the team in scoring, which was pretty awesome. Uh, came in third in, in the uh, whole tournament for 14 UA. So I was pretty happy with him. Um, he got a little full of himself. So I had to knock him around a little bit when we came home. But it's all good. Hey, it's always fun to bring people on the show who bring their A game and speak real talk. This week, uh, we – we're supposed to have former Pittsburgh Steeler and Indianapolis Colt offensive lineman Trey Essex join us, uh, talk a little bit about his career, talk about today's game. So uh, hopefully everybody got a beverage ready to go, and hopefully Trey's able to jump on here real soon. I just just reached out to him, and uh, I'm sure he's, he's getting his things together to join us. So uh, I got my guys here with me tonight. I don't know if Chops is going to join us or not, but Coach Noob, is here, uh, Rasheen the Dream, and T. Sis just came from a little high school basketball game. So, man, how are you tonight? I'm good. Oh, it's, you know, it's, you know, Christmas shopping, you know. <laughs> What'd you get me? Wife spending the money. <laughs> the season. I, I got you. Air, I got you right here, Mark. Family Feud. Sweet. I got nice. you. Nice. Cheers. Oh, <laughs> I need that Clorox for my classroom. Everybody sneezing in there. I just uh, got over there. Crap. There's a lot of kids out. A lot of kids sick. T says you got many kids out in your school? No, but what I just heard was the Jags varsity girls basketball team all has COVID. So that <laughs> the JV team had a forfeit tonight so yeah. that the JV could step in for the varsity. Ooh. That's going to be an interesting Ooh. game. <laughs> Wait a minute. The Jags JV team. No. Jags varsity. Jags varsity got COVID. All has COVID. But all the JV them. team is going to step in for them and play. That's all right. Oh, shit. Hey, hopefully they stay away from us in PE. They got to get, get those girls away. Big V. They're going to play the big V tonight, baby. I, I don't even know anybody on that squad, Mike. You know anybody on that squad? Uh, One or two softball girls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That softball team's going to be all right. They got got some good stuff coming back. Hey, that's always a positive, right? Coach Yeah, they got Coach Horton. Coach Horton's coming back. They're going to be they're going to be legit. State Big champion Mike. coach. Big Mike. Yeah. Hey, before before we go any further before Trey hopefully jumps on here with us guys, um I want to remind everybody we're doing our Christmas show Saturday live from uh uh, Casa de Merida, it'll be at noon on Saturday. So we'll have all kind of craziness going on there. Uh, looking forward to having you men come over and visit. Uh, probably have some bourbon flow in and some I'm food. Make, I'm going to make you some apple pie drinks. What's got, that? Uh, what are you making? Apple pie drink. Oh, Ooh. Hey, we got to bring our lifting belts too. Right? Yeah. Oh, Did that's right. Them? Hey, look, I'm going to need some help, man. I got to take my universal gym and move it 180. I was telling noobs today. So I'm going to need you to step your game up for me on Saturday. I got, we got it. I yeah. got this. <laughs> do, we, hey. do, we sign, do we have to sign a release form? Because, you know, I know I'm pulling something. <laughs> pause. Hey, how about, how about <laughs> yes, pause. before I could get on here, I, I, I was limping around my house. I had a splinter in the bottom of my foot. Have you guys uh, ever had a splinter in the bottom of your foot? You're not supposed to climb the tree stand without boots on, noob. Ah, damn it. I wish you had told me that beforehand. You're climbing like a bear. Yes. So two days I've walked around just limping with this pain in my foot, like the lion that has a splinter in his foot, but he won't slow down. So finally I got my wife to get the needle. <laughs> I swear to God, I needed some Novocaine, though, man. That hurts so bad. But she finally got the little tiny splinter out of my foot. I feel so much better. Wait, wait, wait. You got – she novocaine you? No, I needed it. It hurt oh. so bad. I, I wish I had it. Oh, man. I feel like she was tattooing the bottom of my foot. <laughs> I can't imagine. I can't <laughs> it imagine. Hurt. It hurts right at the bottom of my foot. It was awful. 
He said tattooed on her foot. He was like, the pain, the pain. <laughs> oh, dude, was crazy in real life. You know that? Hey, hopefully the man's going to join us. But before he jumps on here with <laughs> us, guys, uh, let's talk a little. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the NFL. Um, there's some crazy stuff going on. Philly just lost their third game in a row. Yes, sir. Proceed. So, I, I mean, I remember like a month ago, somebody named uh, Mark Meredith told me that they were going to lose in the first round of playoffs. Mm. He I saw it coming. He saw it coming. I didn't want to talk about that. I wanted to go right to the KZ hit on Pittman. Ooh. Oh, you want to get into that? Let's get That's in. a good right, yeah, let's, let's get into that. it. That's okay. a season-ending hit. What is going on? I mean, three get no pay, three games, dude. I mean, they say he was. They say he does it a lot. I I haven't seen it a lot. Not this year. Who did he hit hard? He, he made a hit on Chubb. I just saw it today. Somebody posted it on X. He had a hit on Chubb. It was an open field hit downfield, and he lowered his shoulder into Chubb and knocked his ass sideways and knocked him down. He got fined for that, and I'm like, wait a minute. What are we finding him for? For making a tackle downfield? On a guy twice his size who squats 700 pounds? But, and see, and this is the reason I, when they say, like, like Brady's the greatest or guys are the greatest of this era, like, <laughs> as, like somebody like me who makes, say, $50,000 a game, if you're coming and I'm thinking, well, I'm going to lose my 50, I ain't going to hit you. Right. I can't afford to hit you. Right. Yeah. Do you think right. like that, though? You can play like, for the I'm commanders. You'd be perfect for the commanders. Yeah. I'm just saying, simple. I, I think that's what changes the game. Back then, they would clean you up because they didn't care. Well, you're, right. Def- you, you're right. You definitely see that when those guys are screaming off the edge and they're like, they're pulling up short. You know, you can run, and, you can run across the middle like this and get free and double. Hit the quarterback. You're right you're about that. You know, I mean? you know so now- that, that that's where I see it when the quarterback scrambles. Everyone's like, eh. yeah, like they, they, they say anytime he gives himself up. What the hell does that mean? Mm. All right, guys. Guys are very hesitant to go anywhere near a quarterback. Wouldn't you be? Yes, hundred percent. I'm trying to get paid for my family. It's only a few years. Guess how much KZ misses for those three games? How much? Two thousand and eight dollars. I'm sorry, two two hundred and eight thousand dollars. I'm sorry. Oh, geez, okay. I'm sorry. Two hundred and eight thousand. Two hundred and eight thousand dollars. I think it took me ten years to make that. Two hundred and eight thousand dollars. Yes, he gets paid like under seventy a game, a little bit under seventy a game. Yes. I mean, my first paycheck was twenty-seven thousand a year. Yeah, not, not paycheck, first contract for the year. Yeah, for the year. Yeah. Yep. Damn. He makes That's that a, first quarter. I don't. I don't know. I, I. You know, when you got guys like Tom Brady chiming in on that shit. And saying his quarterback let him out there, his quarterback dropped that ball in a bad place. No wonder what's that DB supposed to do. Now, I know it's Tom Brady, and I know how we all feel about that. But, you know, Brady's perspective is is different today that he gets to sit back and watch the game. And, you know, yeah. I, I could say Brady never hung a guy out to dry. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. I never remember him putting a guy out there like that. That when I think back to, you know, I don't know, he didn't throw the ball far downfield. It probably happened at some point, but as a as a DB at this point in the game, I think you really, really have to be careful how how you lead. You cannot lead with your head at all. You got to kind of hit them with your body, and you and you got to try to get them down in that way. I I think it sounds like a very difficult task because it's hard enough to freaking tackle a guy anyway. But then you put all that into it. Unless you go into the game saying, "Hey, I'm willing to lose fifty thousand this week. I got another one fifty coming, so I'm cool yeah. with it." Because no I got way. I got fifty on thirteen so black down at the down at the casino. So you know what I'm saying That's I, it's so hard because the guys are lowering, the defensive guy lowering, the offensive guy lowering. I'm like, I don't know. How do you? It was it's like Mark said with Nick Chubb. Where else you going to hit him? What what else you going to do? Yeah, you yeah. got to go low. You know what? Yeah. Five nine, five ten. Or you become, or you become a casualty. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, just, you know, I think the people that, I think the people that decide whether somebody goes or doesn't go in a game, like whether they should be suspended for the game or not, I think those guys in New York, they should be former defensive backs that had to be in that situation because it happened so goddamn fast. Yeah, like, 
you can think, oh, I'll be safe. And the next thing you know, he ducked his head. And then all of a sudden, it's helmet to helmet. And you're like, shit, I didn't mean to do that. So you're saying it happened sh- so fast. There would be more grace if there were, if they were. Yes. They, they there it. should be. Yeah. I mean, it's I, so hard. It's so you know, John John Runyon's the guy who sent the letter to him and levied the punishment. And John Runyon said there was so much open field around them that there was no need for him to approach and attack him like that from that angle and 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 levy that type of hit on him. And that's why, you know, he's not only being suspended for uh, a game, he's being suspended for the rest of the season. Uh, I do know that he has requested uh, a hearing to get that, you know, overturned or, you know, shorten the suspension, whatever, whatever the case may be. But I mean, at least in college, if you make a shitty hit like that, they throw you out whenever it is in that game. And then you don't get to come back until that exact same time the next game. So you miss an entire game's worth of play. I don't even agree with that either. I think that sucks too. Yes, because here's my thing. and My thing, and I think we discussed this. If you don't want to get hit, don't sign up. I'll take I'll take a hundred, I'll take a million dollars for people to kick the shit out of me. I'll take it. I would. I, yeah. So I, I think the game is dangerous. I think you got to keep it safe. Oh, come on, man. But God damn, it kills me. Like some of these hits, like it's so unavoidable. Like, it's unavoidable at times. Like, you're just trying to make the tackle, and your head gets in there, and his head ends up because he ducks his head. You can't help it. If the offensive guy drops his head, there's nothing you can do defensively. And it's everywhere. Because, listen, even even when I was playing flag football, I'm playing DB, the ball's coming, and it's like, I can't grab the flag yet, so I got to hit this dude with the flipper. And that's what I would do. And I would get the penalty every time. I'm like, dude, what am I letting him catch it and then grab the flag? Like. I don't know what direction this league's going though, because you know you it's so uneven hitting the quarterback. You don't want to hit the running back low because you might hurt him. You know, I, I mean, there's so many rules. It's so tilted. You can't accidentally you can't accidentally put your weight on the quarterback. Like right, yeah. that's ridiculous. The quarterback rules are insane. Yeah, the weight on him. Yeah, it's like, crazy. You put weight on somebody, your legs got to be up. I don't I never see no one's legs up in the air dropping on them. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Well, it'll be interesting to follow what happens with this and, and what they plan on doing to, to you know, maybe overturn it, maybe change I, I don't know. I don't know. And, and you know what? If he doesn't come on here shortly, we're going to get into this, though. But Tomlin hasn't chimed in on this at all. Do you think no. honor the days where J- James Harrison, people like him are saying, if my mom was on the other team, we're in the other jersey, I kick her ass too? Yeah. Well, that was my you, question. You can't have you can't have that mentality anymore. And that's what I'm saying. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think it should be safer or just let it go, let it be whatever? I'm I'm with I'm with Terror Dune, Thunder Dune. I don't give a damn what happens to you out there. Like you signed up for this. If you don't want to do it, don't sign. Like when they, hey, we sent we want Mark Meredith, we draft you. You don't got to show up. <laughs> you can be like, no, I'm good. I'm Thunderdome. I don't mm-hmm. know about you guys. I, 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 I think that. if there's a way to keep it safer, it's good to do that. I, I, I think a long-term effects, you see guys like Junior Seau, Mike Webster, like I they you, were I, destroyed by the game. Yeah. And if right. there's a way to eliminate that, try to do it. Keep it humane. Like it's – it's devastating to see guys like that and see what happened to them. They can um, I, I don't know if there's a way to do that. Did you guys ever know that Junior say I'll try to commit suicide before he actually committed suicide? He drove yeah. his car off a cliff in San Diego and he yeah. survived that. Like that's mm-hmm. pretty – I think the most astounding one out of all those guys would be Justin Strelzik, who was so fucked up in the head he drove his he drove his truck right into a gas gasoline tanker and mm-hmm. – Blew himself and the driver and the tank, you know, like it was crazy. He yeah. knew what he was doing. He was going the opposite way down the road, and bam, that was it. So it's just it's deeper than depression. It's just like something just you, your brain's been altered. It's just it's like depression on steroids. Yeah, like yeah. your yeah, brain's been bad. altered. You know. Yeah. So well, let's go ahead and get some more. Let's talk a little bit more about the game, and then we'll circle back to the Steelers because there's a. There's just a whole lot. That, you know, it's the centerpiece of the NFL right now. And 
if we don't discuss it with or without Trey Essex, we're doing them a disservice. We're doing our podcast a disservice. And I know, you know, we talk a lot of Steelers stuff. I get it. We're Pittsburgh fans here. Noob's a commander's guy going through a whole lot of stuff there. But, you know, uh, he's transitioning. I actually <laughs> am surprised at the level of quality of play of some of these backup quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. Really? It, I, yes. I, I mean, like that DeVito guy, did you expect that out of that kid with the Giants? Yeah, he's nope. a Bison. Yeah. You know. I, I, uh, I, I, how about the uh, the, the Browning. Bengals? Browning is Browning. Yeah, this. Browning with the Bengals. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know he has better numbers than uh, Burrow had? Yeah, and Burrow had played more, night, more games than him? It could get ugly Saturday, but yeah. Oh, what it's going to get ugly. Oh, it's going to get real ugly. Hey, noobs, what happened with Howe anyway? Why was Brissett in the game? Howe was ineffective? Yeah, he had a rough day. I, I stopped watching, man. I couldn't watch. They were getting killed. But he he apparently was having a rough day, and, and uh, they, they put Brissett in. But Brissett supposedly did pretty well, got him back in the game. He did. And that, that, that was my next question for all you guys. What do you think it is with these, some of these guys like, like Howe, like he wouldn't throw the ball to McLaurin, and then here comes Brissett, and now he's slinging it to McLaurin and everyone else. Like, is it these guys have a relationship with these dudes? Like, hey, man. Uh, so I think they, I think how that game, prior to that game, he didn't throw it to McLaurin enough. But that game, he apparently tried to force it to McLaurin. Ah. And that, you. that's what caused some of the picks. And it was, he was kind of a mess. Gotcha. Yeah. I Is he going to last there, Mike, if, with the change of, with the change of coaching staff? Uh, is is he right. going to last? So, my thoughts are: I think he has the arm, talent, and the moxie to be to be an NFL quarterback. But if they end up with a top two pick, which they very well could, if they lose out, mm -hmm. they could be a top two pick. It's going to be very difficult for whoever comes in as a GM to say, "I can get one of the top two quarterbacks coming out in one of the best classes ever." Supposedly, I don't know, man. I think I think you almost have to take one of those guys, don't you? Mike, if May goes number one, do you take a shot at bringing home another hometown guy and letting him play in your town like they did with Ch uh, Chase Williams? Uh, I mean, my wife could let him borrow some some nail polish. I mean, that would be pretty good. I, it'd well, probably work. Talking about you bring, bring May to the Commanders? No. no I said Caleb if May Williams. goes number one. Yeah. Oh, May oh. goes number one. Gotcha, gotcha, that, gotcha. that means the Commanders have number two. Did you mean yeah, like Caleb Williams? I'm kind of jumping on you. Like you guys have said all along, like I'm not a fan. I'm I'm kind of getting on that boat. I don't know if I really trust that guy. Look at the Lincoln, look at all the Lincoln Rally's past quarterbacks. Hey, I pointed that out some time ago. Not trusting guys. I think I don't know if we want to go. Jalen Hurts. I don't think people are trusting him right now. He's kind of crapping the bed, losing what three in a row. Mike, what I tell you? You said it. You said it. You said it. But said it, I told you. But is I that all on Hurts? Is that uh, all on him? No, it's just I, there's something wrong with that offense. I think you, you got to blame the coordinator. In my Something's opinion, he's not clicking. Yeah. No, how could he be so good last year, but now he's not good? Is it him or is it his coordinator? What changed? They're ten and four. It's his, not they're terrible. His but coordinator is in Indianapolis. Right. That's what changed. That's what the I'm guy saying. He had a relationship with. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's a good coach. He was special. He and left. He was able to, yeah. He was got a head coach. coaching job. And now Patricia is the defensive coordinator because that coach left, didn't he? They, uh, they promoted Patricia. Yeah. Yeah. This week. Yeah. They they yeah, cut loose. They cut loose their defense coordinator this week. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what writes the ship for them because I was never really. As I watched the season play out from my perspective, and this is just my perspective, I saw a team kind of like the Ravens who were just getting by winning some of these games. They weren't winning resoundly, okay? And, and, and I that's that's where I deduced, hey, this is a team that gets knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. You know, this is a team that gets knocked out in the divisional round. This team is not – this team is not sitting on Super Bowl Sunday in a, in a locker room in, in wherever in the hell the Super Bowl is this year. And I, I kind of feel that way still about the Ravens. I think losing Mark Andrews is going mm -hmm. to show up in the uh, 
in the playoffs. They can go ahead and ruin every every game they want to the rest of the regular season. That's fine. You know, no malice towards anybody. But I, at this point now, they just lost their number two running back, Keaton Mitchell. Gus Edwards, yep. they have no confidence in him. His carries are nominal at best. All he does is score touchdowns. And, and, and you know, like Isaiah Likely has had a couple of good games. He's done okay. But yep. – he is not Mark Andrews. He is not Mark Andrews. And, you know, not OBJ, too many guys are. I mean, OBJ, let's face it, it's kind of like playoff hockey. It gets tighter in the playoffs in football, and, and everything gets a little bit, a little bit tighter because you're playing for a lot more. You don't have next week to right the ship. And, and I, I, there's, I just, a, there's a difference there to play, playoff hockey. They're just, they're just going guns out, you know. They're they're just hitting, smashing. Uh, they're in front of them. They're just doing everything. It's, I feel like in football, it tightens up. What you're saying there, yeah. You know, the I, I think, got the yips for the first quarter. Like just things aren't flowing. It's like because of the fanfare and the, and being on that big stage. And if I win this game, I'm going to go to the next and the next. And there's just something different about the football versus hockey playoffs. So I think in football. I can't really speak to hockey, but I think in football, if you have a weakness, it gets exposed in the playoffs. Absolutely. Yep. If you take away Lamar from from the Ravens, what do the Ravens give you? Lamar as far as the runner? Lamar as far as a football player on that team as the quarterback. If you take well, away- how do you you gotta pick and choose? Can you take away the pass or the run? Like I don't think you can do both, can you? I let him I let him throw the ball. Yeah, so, I, I don't so, think he has enough receivers or enough quality receivers or enough skilled receivers that he will be able to allocate the ball to everybody and be successful. Hey, he allocated very well against the Jaguars this week. They just mm-hmm. they beat them up pretty well. Go back and look at the Jaguars the last three or four weeks, guys. And they haven't done much. Yep. Yep. You know, since mm-hmm. I told you. Oh, wait, since, do you mean your London Jaguars? Yeah, <laughs> the since London the Jaguars, Jaguars beat the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> over five weeks ago, the Jaguars are two and three. Did you know that? Yes. So they're not they're not what everybody thinks they are either. That right. that team is not you know it's it's it, the right. NFL has got a lot of parity. That that's the thing I love the most about it. How many teams are still in it, headed towards the playoff the playoff push? I mean, there's a lot of teams that are still headed towards the playoff push and, and have an opportunity. A team wins here, a team loses there. You're going to see some teams. You know, the Texans, the way they were playing, everybody was like, yeah, you know, C.J. Straub, the Texans. Yep. Hasn't looked that way the last couple of weeks, has it? Mm-hmm. You know, so, uh, I mean, I do like I do like this week's matchup of the Niners and the Ravens. The Ravens finally going away from Baltimore, finally going to a formidable opponent. Who's playing really good football? Do the Ravens have what it takes to actually shut down Brock Purdy, who has thrown the 32nd least amount of passes in the NFL, but is number two in passing yardage? I want to Brock and roll all night and Purdy all day. Yeah. Wait, he is he's, but Mark, say that stat one more time. I need to hear that. He's, again. he's number 32 in terms of pass attempts. Mm-hmm. But he has the second most passing yardage in the league. So yards per attempt must be off the charts. Yeah. Wow. Yep. The yak That's is impressive. The yak is out of this world. Uh, Terry and I were talking about this earlier today, and Terry said, "You know, C- C- Christian McCaffrey is going to get the uh, MVP." I think, it, yeah, he has a great shot at it. But I also think Purdy has done some things that have really kept that team uh, humming. Very well for a uh, you know, Mister Irrelevant. He's doing pretty well. I got McCaffrey. I got fantasy, by the way. So McCaffrey is going to be a uh, two way player on the uh, white team too. By the way. <laughs> oh, is he? Stop mm-hmm. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. We do is have to allowed? address that at some point. We got to address. That is, oh, we can talk about that. We talk about that. <laughs> We could talk about that. McCaffrey <laughs> has 13 touchdowns in uh, 1,292 yards. Yeah. Uh, we, can we go back? We got to work on his backpedal. 
Are we, are we talking about Mendenhall? He's got to be able yeah, to open his hips, right? Shot Mendenhall. That is terrible. That is terrible, Mendenhall. He's, that was a funny ass I, I looked at I looked in his uh, Instagrams and stuff, and he put a post out there. People were wondering why I retired at 26. I said, no, we're not. You suck. Oh, yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? You're not, you're, listen, you, he wasn't better than Riggins. He wasn't better than Merrill Hodge. He might have been on par. Merrill Hodge definitely ran harder. That's a fact. Oh, yeah, he ran harder. He got uh, concussions. I mean, he, he got to be watching football now, right? He doesn't know Christian McCaffrey. And then let me let me, let me me give you Mr. All-Star. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on, bro. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe maybe he had maybe he got hit too hard, uh, New Visor. Yeah. Uh, he might have. <laughs> Who's the last – Making white... comments like that. I hey, mean... here's one for you. Who's Jason... the last white cornerback to start in the NFL – Jason Seahorn. Seahorn. Yeah. That's my Last guess. One. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Last yeah. one. Is that right? Giant, 2002. Yep. God damn. Is, and, then, and then he rolled over to safety after that. But guess what? Iowa has one coming this year, and they say he's pretty damn good. White dude? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to see him match up with fucking Rashard Mendenhall then. Let's go Compton, ahead, Rashard. Compton Com- Com- said we're pulling him up for this game. Where did that comment <laughs> come from besides left field? Say that again. Where does comment come from besides left field? What, like what he made him stay so, relevant? Was there he something? Was, was he reacting to something else, or well, he just wants to stay honest, relevant. He yeah, wants I mean, guys like us to have a conversation about him. That's all. I mean, I think in all honesty, it's just similar to the NFL. It's people who know people because I mean, there's guys who are good. There's guys that are great to do that to, to do sports. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not a big Chris Collinsworth guy, but uh, you know. Who is? Somebody. Jake Collins' word. His son is. But I, 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 I don't. I get sent it. this to Rasheen wow. earlier today, that, guys. That's like anti NFL. We're trying to bring people together. And I, don't, I, I agree, you should always bring people together. But I understand the sentiment. I just think you don't need to put that out there. I, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. There's no reason to say all that. But, but I understand the sentiment. Like. You you hear these guys that sucked in the NFL or they were okay, and then they're like, oh, he needs to do this, this, and this. No, 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 like, no. like they could have done it, right? And like, who am I? I mean, I'm not, I'm not I mad. Carry, I could carry his jock strap, but we're just on here shooting the shit. But he gets I'm, I'm not mad at the guys who were bad in the NFL because they played in the NFL. That's a whole that's a whole thing to even get to that level. Yeah. That's uh, why I said you hand them those guys who hand the marker and you tell them to go show you what the hell to do. There you go. I'll bet you if you handed Richard Mendenhall the marker and you said, go ahead, draw it up for me. You tell him what you want drawn up. He ain't going to be able to do that. He had to worry about hanging on to the football when he was playing instead of worrying about the white guy and the black guy getting along. I mean, that's just insane to, to make that comment. And I know, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll leave it at that. I can tell you that if a, if a white guy made a comment like that, it would have been fucking all over everywhere. Oh, I think it would have. I, I just think there's no place. I mean, honestly, come on, man. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> it's football. Come on, <laughs> man. You, know, you told me to take my screensaver off. And I love that. <laughs> hey, you know, my thing was uh, somebody put out a, a tweet yesterday about, you know, the, the shirts that the coaches wore this week on the sidelines. I didn't even read that shit. What did it say? Yeah, like, well, they, the league, they every announcer pointed it out. Okay, whatever. But I don't watch football, and I this is what I said. I don't watch football for social justice. Right. I don't watch football for political statements. I give two shits about Trevor Kelsey and, and, and what's her name, okay? I don't care about that. I watch football for football, and I learned a long time ago. I turn it on when it starts, and I turn it off at halftime, and I turn it on when the second half kicks on, and I turn it off at the end of the game because I don't care about anything else. That's yeah, not going to change your views. Yeah. No, not at all. Not at I, all. I couldn't even read it. I tried, but it was just, I don't know what the hell. Was that cursive or something? I don't know what the hell it was. One of the coaches, I was telling Terry, they were pointing out one coach who who had his T-shirt on, but he wore a hoodie over underneath it, and the hood went halfway down his back, and they were complaining about that. And I'm like, so what? Maybe he was cold. Who cares? Oh, wait, so everybody had those shirts on? Yeah, every, every, yeah, every coach. Yeah, okay. every head coach. I guess every head coach. Oh. Every head coach. Are you talking mm-hmm. about Taylor Swift? 
the world's single worst carbon emitting celebrity. She oh. is known to be uh, taking these jets across the country to see Travis Kelsey and burning the most fuel. Did you hear that? No. Heck, stay home, honey. <laughs> Watch them on TV. Who cares? She I increases know, viewership, though. Funny. People, girls get excited to watch her on TV. They're like, "Oh, oh look at Sarah Smith!" It's helping the fan. It's really helping the fan base. I'm telling you, yeah. Her a few times, just like they're like watching her the whole time and what she's doing. Okay, tell me if you think this is true. I I put this out to you guys today in our group. Rich Eisen, uh, Watt said it is wild, and that some of them don't want to practice. It's what he said, or don't want to practice in the way that everybody's supposed to practice. And he said that this past week, everybody did do that. And then you saw the result. Now you could sit there and say, then Tomlin's got to change his way. TJ Watt also said that the younger generation takes criticism personally and how that he didn't call it a problem. They I did. just inferred it was. They did. I um, mean, that sounds very accurate to me. Yeah. You know, and, and Rich Eisen said he had this candid conversation with Watt off off the record, but was permitted to put it on the record. I don't I think, think Eisen should have put that out there. I think that's kind of bullshit. It puts him on the spotlight. Yeah, and like Chop said in, in the chat, I, I, someone credible like that to put it out there without saying an unknown source. You know what I mean? Wait, Throwing wait. Watt under the bus and saying, he told me this. Now, we all know that there's issues in the locker room. We all know that there's issues on the field. We see them running off – I'm sorry, not running off the line of scrimmage to block anyone, walking off the line of scrimmage and not blocking anyone. It's it, it's a total shit show up there in Pittsburgh. Who's it putting the spotlight, though? You're talking about what? Yeah. So yeah. Supposedly, uh, I had had this conversation with him on his side. Okay. Okay. Here's my problem with it all, though, and I'll let you guys talk after I say this. Isaac's the same idiot that said that the fan base in Pittsburgh doesn't appreciate Tomlin and they shouldn't even think about wanting him fired. My question, did Eisen post this or did someone else post that Eisen heard this? Like, It's what, posted I mean, in quotes. I, it's posted I mean, it's in bullshit quotes. Then. That's bullshit. If Eisen didn't post it, then bullshit. That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah, I kind of felt that way. I'd be paraphrased. But I, if 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 Watt said it, then he said it. Like my thing is, somebody needs to say these things. And again, like if these dudes can't say, "Oh well, I'm I'm practicing like shit. I'm playing like shit. I'm not." And Watt saying this, I'm gonna try to raise my game. That's but that's kind of like they said about the younger people. When you tell them something, they get all down in the dumps instead of you know, like I'm sure you tell the kids they should work out. They oh, I don't want to do that. And that's right. why you're, that's why you're where you are. I I agree with that, but you can't say this guy told me this and this is what I heard and therefore it is fact. You can't say that. Judge Judy says that every time. You can't say what that person said. <laughs> so today, you know, my mom watches Judge Judy. <laughs> yeah, so today, me both. <laughs> today they talked to Pickens. And they, they asked Pickens the question. They said, we heard that Coach Cower had a good conversation with you about, you know, Tom. what was going on. Pickens said, he didn't have no conversation with me. Tomlin, Matt Cower. Tom. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Coach Tomlin had a good conversation with you about what's going on. And he said, we didn't have any conversation. What are you talking about? Who said that? Pickens. Pickens. Pickens, Pickens needs to go. He does. So, I was a – I was a big fan of Pickens Me too. coming out. I, I loved his film. His film was ridiculous coming out of Georgia. I was like, this kid is super talented. He is. But he is a fucking dickhead. There's an understatement, and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mar Bartender! What do you think we can get for him, Meredith? Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to get God. anything that he brings in terms of value. Damn. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, if you dangle him out there, you're going to get a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. Fifth round, yeah, fifth round pick. I say, you know, he, he's got so much more to offer from that perspective. As they this is where I think the culture needs changed in Pittsburgh. So let's go that direction. Well, you're, you're not going to get anything because he hasn't done anything yet. No. He has the team. 
Yeah. He leads the team in targets and yeah. catches in yardage this year. Yeah, bro, bro, you can see it. He's he's a talent. It, it, it's, yeah. it's, what Mar- it's what Mark said. It, you're only going to get that because people know you want to get rid of him. So they're going right. to say, well, right. they're going to be your fifth or sixth, and they hope you're going to jump on it. But his potential has not been maximized in the system. And if it was, he would get we would get a lot more from him. So for now right. – for him, little for drag him. routes. No, I they, they could use him so much more. Yeah, they don't use him much at all. No, he's a, he's a and that's he's blowing up, and he's like, "Shit, I ain't blocking. Why should I block? You won't even throw me the ball." Hey, let's he's, open this can of worms, then, boys. He's a stud. You know what do you do here? This is a shit show in Pittsburgh. You're right, Terry, and yeah. I'm not kidding. This is a national issue. You hear a lot of national <laughs> people chiming in, and most of them are on the side of Tomlin saying that, you know, he doesn't deserve to be be ousted, things like that. Now, Shannon Sharp stood up to, who was it, Keyshawn Johnson or Ocho Cinco the other day? And, and Ocho Cinco's like, you can't do that, you can't do that. And he's like, no, bullshit. He said, the Pittsburgh Steelers are built on winning championships. They step on the field and expect to play hard and win championships. And Tomlin doesn't do that. Tomlin is a 500 coach. If Kenny Pickett comes back, boys, I'm going to tell you right fucking now, and you can write this down. If Kenny Pickett comes back, this team will go nine and eight. This team will go nine and eight. Nine and eight. Yep. Also, what Shannon Sharp said (laughs) was, if you're running a business, right? Kenny say this? You're running a business. (laughs) You're not you're not paying your employers, your employees to break even. You want to make money and they're not doing that. They're not they're not getting to that next level. But no. Rooney too is. Rooney too does not give a shit and he runs the team like he does it. I don't care what kind of lip service he gives the two times a year he opens his mouth. His old ass needs to sit down and practice law and let somebody take over this organization within the family that knows what they're doing and cares about what's going on. This isn't what the chief had put in place. This isn't what the other Rooney had put in place before he passed away. But this guy gives two shits and he shows it by being by being satisfied every year with a nine and eight team. I don't even know what that one looks like. I got to look him up. Right. What's a combination his name? of the other two. Art Rooney the second. <laughs> Art Rooney the second. You know, we looked at a lot of numbers this week, guys. We I've been I've been personally throwing numbers to you. Uh, um, Tomlin and and Cower both have very similar numbers. Okay, and Cower had losing seasons. Oh, that's him. Okay, Cower had losing seasons, but Cower also made it to how many AFC Championship games? Now he's lost some of those. But you got to think about this, and I want you to think about this long and hard. I can be a 500 or harder coach, nine and eight, uh, uh, t- you know, whatever, ten and six, whatever. I can be that guy year in and year out and gain all these, and gain all these victories. But I don't go anywhere with it. If you look at what was said this week, they had proven the proven fact that four of the 17 years that Tomlin has been coach, and he made the playoffs. They only won games in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Four Listen. of the 17 years that he made the playoffs, they won a game. Won they game. only won a game in the playoffs. That's yeah. that's 25. percent I can tell you, man. My Sundays were always bo- was all, were always built around the Stiller game. Now I don't give a damn. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, I, I don't know. My formidable years were the 80s, and we absolutely sucked ass. And I feel like we're going back to that. Yeah, and, and it's it, it's it's really heart wrenching. It's it's. Are tough. you talking like Merrill Hodge in them seasons? Yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, but we they but they were they were uh, yeah. And, but as I go back and I look at those '80s seasons, those guys worked hard. They tried they hard. They These guys aren't doing that. And that's what you, you brought up like the newbies. Yeah. You know, this is t- two of the last three weeks or so that we've watched Pickens walk off the line of scrimmage or let a block go. You know what he – you know how he justified letting that block go today? He said, I didn't want a Tank Dell thing to happen to me, so I let the block go before the guys rolled up on me. That's what, what he said. I don't know if you guys watched last night's game, though. Uh, A.J. Brown does that, mm-hmm. too. 
Does he? Yes. He just walks out. I was like, wow, this is weird. Yeah, he just walks wow. out. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. Yep. Well, maybe maybe yeah. that's the thing to do. Mm-hmm. Don't block At the people. very least, you could at least run down the field and make him chase you. Just or do that you, at least. You at least. You know, I, I, I – and again – I couldn't hold any of these guys' jock straps, and this was only oh. high, school, high school football. But I said, you want to go to the next level, you're not getting the ball. They're watching you. When you're not getting the ball, you got to block. Yeah. You got to block and go out there and, and flatten someone, you know, block till the whistle, whether it's coming your direction, not coming your direction, you're going out for a pat, whatever. You got to block. And now these guys are. I, I don't think they're being taught that. I have a hard time. Mm-hmm. Zero chance. I have nope. a hard time accepting watching this. I don't understand what's going on. So is it, at, the ego? North, is it, is it the, give me the damn ball? Like what is going on? They're selfish. But at, so at Northwest, we have a guy, Miles Gray. He's a great wide receivers coach, uh, runs clinics, does all kinds of stuff. His, his quote is no block, no clock. You don't block. You're not getting on the field. Fuck you. And, and that's how it works. If you don't block, you're getting pulled out. We'll put the next guy in. And he will block, and then he will catch a pass. We will not throw you the ball if you don't block. Yeah, that, that it's 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 that's concerning because that's what we're trying to teach. Right. We're teaching that right at, at high school yeah. level. Yes. I know they're getting at the college, they're getting at the college level, right, Shane? Yes. It, it, yep. What's happening from where's the disconnect from college to pros? It's called accountability. They're they're not getting taken off the field, so right. they're allowed to keep doing that. Right. Are so are they saying, "Hey, I'm worth X amount of money. What are you gonna do?" Basically, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, it's either do you do you want Antonio Brown or Greg Garrity? Which one? <laughs> you can laugh about it, but he's a hundred percent right. You're right. I mean, the name of the game is winning. <laughs> but I'll say this. In the situation the Pittsburgh Steelers are in, if Tomlin really wants to get get his team back on track, he's going to look at Pickens and he's going to say, I'm taking your helmet the next three weeks. I don't give a shit what you do. That's what he's going to do. He's going to say, fuck that's, you. You don't want to block. That's what I would do. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. what I would do. I'm taking fuck your helmet you. the next three weeks. Get, get the fuck out of here. You don't want to help our team yeah. win. Get, that, get out of here. Exactly. That's do bullshit. You, do you plan on trading him or letting him come back the next, next year? Tell him to fuck off. He can come back if he wants to come back. If he doesn't want to come back, go fuck off. We'll That's how I feel track. about it. You know, yeah. th- there's no way. You're going to take I, the fifth round pick. Look, they're going to lose anyway unless Kenny Pickett plays a couple of these games. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You it's can't win with happen. that effort. You can't win with that effort. You cannot. Yeah. Everyone needs to be on the same page. Gotcha, Sheen. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I believe that. I really believe that. Because Kenny Pickett has – he's been a winning quarterback with the Steelers. You can say whatever you want, but he's been a winning quarterback. You know, you can talk about how the passes he's missed. You can talk about the stupid turnarounds and he gets sacked. You can talk about all that shit. But at the end of the day, he wins games. No, no, he he doesn't – He well, he does. But what? that was my question a couple of weeks ago. What kind of vodka – what are you drinking, bourbon? No, wait, 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 Pickett, wait, wait, wait. Tell me, wait, how many games did Pickett win when he started? Seven. Was seven. he seven and two? Seven and two? Seven and four. Seven. No. Are you sure? We have, we've lost the last three without him. What I what I'm saying it what I was gonna say was he's not a quarterback that's gonna go out and win the game. He's gonna not lose the game. He's playing to not lose. I feel he's he's going to manage it. So he's a man, like, right. He's like Trent Dilfer. Okay, he's not going to win it. He's not going to lose it. I heard of Trent Dilfer, but yeah. Does Ray Lewis play on the defense? Well, it's <laughs> it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was, Listen, I don't think he's. I think if he's that way, that's a product of what the offensive coordinator is telling him to do. Yeah. Well. And and that's another thing. Hey, I'm going to tell Rasheen what to do. Rasheen's going to tell the quarterback what to do. The quarterback's going to tell the, everybody else what to do. Well, there's too many. That's telephone. You're you're playing telephone. Just have one person call it in, and that's it. So, I think there's too much shit going on. When By the I way, both the of those guys are on the sidelines now. Huh? Both of those guys are on the sidelines now. 
Cool. You could put both those guys in the parking lot because they both suck. The whole system yeah. sucks. Rasheen, wasn't it? Was it you that said that Kenny Pickett all he does is either go vertical or what was the other route he runs? Pickens yeah, runs Pickens. or back shoulder. That's it. I don't see him doing anything different. He does one of these. He does one of these. And That's he gets on the offensive he's coordinator. Got a, like, the middle, a couple. Yes. I mean, but he should do that on a regular basis. Run the mesh concept where he's underneath. Run him underneath care. and give him the ball and let him do some stuff with the ball. But you got to have somebody who knows how to call that shit. You got to have somebody who knows the- Why aren't they? Like, he's a very talented player. Get him the ball in space. I was listening to TV this morning. They said the 49ers are good at attacking the linebackers and safeties. Yep. I, I, but I, I mean, I, I mean, with Debo I, I, Samuel. Put Debo I, I, in the slot. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Hey. Jamie Yang asked yeah. for another friend request. Let's talk about another game. How about the Cowboys and the Bills? We're not. We're talking off Steelers. I don't they care. They suck. About I'm uh, tired no. of it. We'll talk to somebody else. All right. <laughs> Cowboys and Bills. I like it. I love that one. That was uh, – ooh, they got punched in the mouth. Boy, that was that a nut, nut crusher there. Yeah. What? What? So how does that happen? <clears throat> Like I don't understand. If you're if you're like the Cowboys, you're you're a legit like top three team in the NFC. Are How you, you going to a game and do that? Well, essentially, it was a, a playoff game for the Bills. They were seven and six, seven and six, and if they didn't win that, I think. All, sorry, uh, if they didn't win that, I think all chance all bets were off for them. So they really stepped up and. I don't. I don't know how it happened, but it happened with Josh Allen. He played phenomenal, and uh, running back Cook played phenomenal. Yeah, I, I don't even think a line. I mean, Allen even threw that many many passes. He just mm. kept. He just kept handing the ball off. Who Josh Allen? Yeah, oh, James, James Cook had a career day. Yeah, what was uh, Josh Allen? Was it like single digits? Down. I'm sorry, I mean, 96 yards. And he like yeah, he did. Yeah, he managed the game, but. Cook, 179 yards for a touchdown. That's what I meant. Cook. Cook, yeah. I mean, he killed him. He was cooking. I don't – I mean, you know, my thing is with the Cowboys is this is a bunch of um, – it's always about Micah Parsons. I don't even know if he played because I didn't see him. And then, you know, It's been I mean, weeks since there's been a Parsons sighting. We haven't weeks. heard about, Remember how they were telling us how good Diggs, the cornerback, was last year? And I haven't heard I haven't heard about him this year. Well, he's hurt. Well, no, oh. that's, that's because Clark – He got hurt a long time ago. Is it Clark? Okay. No, who's yeah, the other uh, – ACL. The other... You're talking no, about you know, Gilmore. 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 Oh, oh Gilmore. Five, five uh, pick sixes. Yes. Yeah, and that, that, I think we talked about that. What's going to happen? They're going to get, get – like they're going to have to make space here for Gilmore and Diggs when he comes back. I didn't know Diggs was out, so that's not good for them this week, but okay. <clears throat> He's, He's been out. out all year. He's been out. Uh, I, okay. I want you to take a look at their – their win loss record and take a look at who the Cowboys actually beat. Okay. Beating Philadelphia and Dallas while Philly's on a downswing after they had just got trampled by the Niners. Okay. You beat Philly. I get it. But we just sat here early in the show and talked about how Philly is not a formidable team at this point. There's something missing. Okay. I, I don't, Dallas is another team. I don't, I, I, they, I don't get excited about them. I just don't. They don't excite me. Then. So yeah, I mean that's really the only big win. It's the Eagles because yeah, Giants twice, uh, Chargers. They beat them by three. Patriots. They beat by thirty-five. Carver, Where at though in Dallas? Uh, yes. Yeah, of course. Beat the Jets. Uh, that's it. Yeah, Eagles. It, oh, it, oh, the it, Panthers. It, oh, never mind. Commanders. They beat the Cowboys. They beat the Seahawks last week. I mean, the week before. I'm sorry. Where at Dallas? Uh, Seattle. Okay. Seattle. Mm, big win. They they split with the Eagles. Yes. And then they got trumps by the Bills. They got the Dolphins this week. Lions. And then the Lions after that. So. What do you mm. think? What do you Good think test. about the What do you think about the Lions? Are they who they say they are? No. Nah, still not very good defensively. Schedules created based off the year before. Yeah, 
Well, well, I mean, of course, you play like AFC East. You play the autumn teams, but yeah, outside of that mandatory thing, is it based off of? And then you play who all the third place teams are in in, right. a, in all the divisions in your in your conference, and then you play right. your whole your whole division. You know, so yeah. But as far as that goes, I mean, they're they're another good wide receiver away from being very dynamic offensively, and. and, and well, they need to. They need to just keep feeding Jameer Gibbs the ball. Why they would ever go away from giving that kid the ball, uh, Mike? You called that one early on, uh, very early, about what a dynamic runner he is. And, and they just—I don't know. They, they all of a sudden they start giving it to Montgomery again. I'm like, what the hell are you giving it to that guy for? Try to keep the wear and tear down. I mean, Montgomery's yeah, not. Yeah, you got him. He's not bad. He's consistent. Montgomery is. Yeah. yeah. He's a more between tackles guy than, mm-hmm. than on the outside. So they had Swift last year. He goes to Philly. Mm-hmm. And now they got Gibbs doing the bulk of the, of the carries. Were they together? They they were together last year? No. No, no Gibbs. Gibbs got drafted. Gibbs. He's a rookie. Yeah. So did they get rid of Swift to keep the cap? Uh, then they got rid of Swift. Well, they brought Montgomery in from Chicago, right? Yeah, they brought yeah. Montgomery in. Yep. Montgomery's making more money than Swift would have made. So I think, yeah, I think Swift, didn't really, Swift is I only in his third really year. Like Why did yeah, they get Swift they, then? Did they trade him or did they just let him go? They traded him. Oh, well. They, they traded him. He's Maybe they like his pass probably. protection. Okay. But Maybe you're saying, I think he farted in position meetings. Detroit's a receiver away, but Noob's saying a, a defense away. Yeah, uh, defensive pieces, I agree. They got a couple <laughs> pieces defensively. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm not, I'm not pieces. Defensively. I, I'd say if a free agent here, uh, a couple of draft picks there. Yeah. And they, they really – Huh? Levi Wallace. <laughs> hey, they could have Levi, and I'll package up Keanu Neal and KZ if he needs a place to go after this oh, year. Poor uh, KZ. Everyone. I feel bad for him, man. That sucks. You know, so uh, I, I don't know. If you look around the league, I don't know if there's much else that that presents itself as, as a competitive, high-functioning team right now. You you know, Terry said to me this morning, he said, I think Niners and Ravens this weekend might be a preview of the Super Bowl. I'm not sold on it. I'm well, not. you know why I said that. I, run them, I think Niners run them, run them, run them. I saw that. The emblem for the Super Bowl is red and purple, and they said it's a known fact. Anytime the whatever the color is, that's who makes it. Was it on the Simpsons? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think is no. I, I think I th- that's, that's who I think is making let's, it. Let's do this right here. Top five teams right now today. Top five in the league or yeah. across every league. Oh, in the NFL, top five. Okay. Oh, we're doing that. Okay. Oh. I got the Niners. We I got the Niners. And, and you, you got to got the right Ravens. They're 11 and 3. You have to. That too. New Browns, would you agree with both of those? Say it. Uh, my, my audio just went out. Hold on. Say it again. What'd you say? We said 49ers. We can't hear you. No, I'm joking. We said <laughs> Niners and Ravens. Top five. Niners, number one. Ravens, two. Yes. Ravens, yes. All right, next. I would have to go, and, and I feel like there's a drop off here, but I would have. Be right back. You gotta huh? do what? Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Sizzle. Oh, it, this is tough. Like we're just harping on the uh, Cowboys, but I feel like the Cowboys mm. over the Dolphins. I would say the mm. Cowboys, then the Dolphins. Mm. How about Buffalo? They are now eight and six and have strung together a few good wins. You know, it's it's tough. It's like can they go to Kansas City and win? I don't know. I feel like they got something to prove. They didn't prove it early, but beating beating Dallas is got you know that's got some fuel to fire. And they're like, hey, we can do this. We can string some going into the playoffs, and maybe we can make a run. They're healthy. And uh, I don't know. This might be something they need more than they ever needed to be a top seed. Usually when those teams are a top seed, 
Uh, they played really good football. They kind of tail off at the end because they know where they're going to sit. And it's hard to kind of get that oomph back if you miss a game, yeah. if you haven't played hard to get there. I, and, I it's, mean, uh, and it's hard to say, would I take Buffalo over Philly right now? I, you know, after watching last week, no, I, you're saying no. Uh -uh. Philly lost three in a row. They're looking pretty dismal, even though they're sitting pretty at ten and four. This reminds me, I, you know, this reminds me of the debacle of the ten and zero season where the Steelers ended up eleven and five. Five. Is so, Philly is Philly headed for that direction? So let me tell you right now what the NFL power rankings are. I'm looking at them. Okay, so you got we get we got one and two right. Yeah, Dallas at three, Cowboys at four. Listen, these top four teams play this week. Cowboys play Dallas. Niners play Ravens. Number five, Eagles. Number six, take a guess. Kansas Chiefs. City Chiefs. Seven. Big hey, noobs. Take the mute off. You got mute on noobs. Chiefs Great. over the Eagles. Huh? I'll take the Chiefs over the Eagles. Chiefs over Eagles. Let's see. Don't oh, you? Okay. 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 I, the Eagles, I agree with Meredith. There's something wrong with the Eagles. Like, they're not right. Guess who they got at seven and eight? I've watched Eagles them lines. There's something wrong with the Eagles. Here's the top five power rankings I'm looking at for this week. I got San Francisco 11 and three. I got Buffalo at eight and six because what? of the last few. Because Ooh. of the last few weeks, they're on the roll. Because of the last few weeks, oh, Dallas at ten and four, uh, Baltimore at eleven and three, and Miami at ten and four, and then Kansas City. And, and I think Baltimore at eleven and three. If you shake it out and look at who they've played and the way they where they've had to play them, it's a difference maker. It's a difference maker. Wow. Hmm. Well. Wow. The the. Strength of schedule remaining is Miami and then Baltimore. Those two have the highest uh, strength of schedule. Yeah, ba Baltimore has to play San Francisco in San Francisco. Then Miami. they play Pittsburgh in Baltimore. No, they they play Miami, then Pittsburgh, yeah. But, you know, even though let, – let me put it to you this way. Even though Pittsburgh is, is a crap team, playing yeah. Pittsburgh – is always a dog fight, no matter who the quarterback is or anything. That game is always a dog fight. They it's always really... like to play down to each other. They don't. They don't like it. They like the one one score game, three points. Let's keep it even. You know. So what game am I? What game are we tuning into this weekend? If you had to pick one game, I'm I'm watching both of those games, uh, Ravens and Niners and Cowboys and Hope. Hopefully they got them on different times. Yeah, that's definitely those are games to watch for sure. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Sheen keeps keeps emailing us or texting us about these uh, pit lady uh, volleyball games. Maybe I got to tune into one of them, John. They're so, over. The season's over. You missed it all. <laughs> missed it. Damn. They made it to the final four, and that was it. And that's the first time I watched it. It was great. I loved it. <laughs> oh man, it was awesome. yeah, volleyball is cool. Love. Yeah, yeah. Jermaine O'Neal's daughter plays for uh, Texas. Jermaine O'Neal used to play for the Pacers, the big seven-foot guy. Yeah, he has a daughter who plays for I Hey, to Mike, see. speaking of Pitt and NIL, how many guys did we see today that have hit the NIL? Or the, not the NIL, the portal? For Pitt? Did Pitt? Pitt I not just I, Pitt. Not just Pitt. Oh, uh, there's a gazillion. I mean, it's that. But I, I – like every team you look at has lost like 14, 13, 14 guys have been a lot of teams hit hard. So I specifically looked at Wake, they lost 14 guys. Uh, Duke, same thing. A lot of schools have lost a lot of good players and it's hard. I mean, I, it's, it's your depth. You're losing your depth. And then, so we were talking about it today. I, it's kind of crazy how it's changed. So, a lot of the recruiting going on now because – so say like uh, – say your team uh, – we love Pitt, right? So Pitt's going to replace a lot of the guys that lost in the portal by guys from the portal. Bring those guys in. Their recruiting numbers will go down. They won't recruit as many guys and right. come in because they got to win now. 
Yeah. Am I going to take a guy from Iowa that played six games at guard, or am I going to take this kid from Pennsylvania that has never played college football ever, right. but yeah. he looks okay on film? Like, zero chance, yeah. right? So, so the recruiting classes are going to go down. The guys that they bring in from the portal are going to go up because the coach needs to win right now. I seen a video where the coach messed with me. You said they were already bringing in eight guys, that, you know, high school guys. The rest were all portal. And uh, there's a there's a local kid. I, I'm not going to say it on here. But I'll discuss it with y'all off of here. But he was committed to a Big Ten school all season. Uh, they changed coaches. Coach came in and said, "We're taking all portal guys. You got you. you you're we're not honoring. We're not honoring your commitment anymore." The portal is yeah. out of control. It's what it's cool. It's out of control. You can at least tell us what school. Uh, good counsel. What what high, what college? Oh shit! You know, if I, he said Big Ten, it's Michigan State. It's in, in uh, I, uh, Indiana. Penn State. Indiana. 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 Is he white or black? What number? <laughs> what position? What position does he? Hey, is hey, he in the slot? Hey, you, let's, let's talk about something else that was kind of crazy. If you have two, this was Sunday. If you have, <clears> if you have two quarters. You can buy tickets to the Carolina Panthers game. Fifty cent tickets? Did you say two quarters? They were forty five cents for up for the five thirty two section. You got five cents back? Could you buy a hot dog? Wow! Yeah, see, look, look at that! Wow! What the hell? Let's go down to Charlotte. Let's go, fellas. I'm, what I'm do there. you think the game? Hey, what do you think a ticket's going to cost oh, in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Saturday, Rasheen? It's going to be more than that. Fifty Who's bucks. Well, this this game they were playing the Falcons, but listen. So, but it was twenty minutes before kickoff. There was a hundred people in there. Oh, I saw that. There was a high, the high school championship games in Texas have more people in it than the Carolina Panthers game. Well, on the fastest three minutes, they said, and the fans are still there. No, they're not. It's raining. And they yeah, suck. It was raining and they were bad. So yeah, yeah. people already gave up. But yeah, they, they, and they charged forty five cents. Anyone go, bro. My goodness, I've never seen that in my life. Who's gonna get, what? Who's gonna be responsible for bringing in Bryce Young? Is it GM? I mean, does he get held responsible? He's got to, whoever made that decision's got to go. That's pathetic. That's awful. Another Meriday special right there, Mike. Yeah, another Meriday special. Right there, I, I marinade for you. You know, I, I I talked to I talked to our former colleague Kevin Watson. Uh, we were throwing some stuff back and forth, and uh, I, I asked Kevin, you know, what the Steelers should do. Uh, never, he never mentioned a head coach. He's a huge Tomlin guy. He's a Tomlin drum beater. Okay, he drinks that Kool Aid hard. First thing he said was quarterback, and I said, okay, who you bringing in? And he said the kid from Alabama, and I forget who else he said. And I was like, He's I wouldn't back. touch Alabama. the kid. Yeah, I, I wouldn't touch the kid from Alabama with a 10-foot pole. And that's after next year. I, I mean. Did he just go in the portal? Oh, Jalen Mil 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 Milrow. No, he's, he's going back to school for a year. The other dude went to the portal, right? I mean, if you get Jake Daniels from LSU, I would consider that. Yes. How about J.J. McCarthy from Michigan? I consider that. Are you sold on him? I Have you seen him play? Yeah. I consider either one of those two. I like both those guys. I like JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy's a gutsy player. Okay. Yep. I do like him. He's got good size. He throws a mean fucking ball. He really does. And he has no problem running the ball either. Okay. You know. Well, I'm all so, for I'm all for you know, for whatever. Whatever's gonna make him better. But you know, it's time time's going to tell with this. You said that scholarships are being taken away from these young kids. Well, what are these teams going to do in terms of players then? Eventually, because you're going to need to give scholarships to young kids and develop them. It's a, it's going to be a vicious cycle. Yeah. You know, so the other thing, the other thing that uh, some coaches are talking about, like the lower level D ones. Uh, D2s, like, they're talking like, okay, listen, you can go to Maryland and be a backup for two years, or you can come here and start for two years and then transfer to a better school than Maryland. True. Who's, that's, saying, who's saying that? Selling point. That is, that's happening a lot. It's not that he's just saying it. That's, what, that's what's going on. No, no, I'm saying, oh, okay. I'm saying, like, is Maryland recruiting you to say, come here for two years, 
then if you want, you can go somewhere. No, no, no. The other school saying, I'm talking about other like, schools. Talking like Slippery Rock, going to Slippery yeah. Rock for years, playing, getting you some experience. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's so what school where you know you can play, play for two years, get you some film, and then yeah. transfer up. And we're good with that. We've worked with you. You've been, you've been great for us for two years, and then transfer up. Whereas if you go to Michigan State or Michigan, you're going to sit on the bench for three years. Yeah. And guess what happens to that kid who goes to Slippery Rock in the PSAC and he makes them a winning program? He gets more kids to go there because they're a winning organization. They're that, a winning team. That's, I mean, that's kind of, do you ever watch a Netflix special, Last uh, Last Chance You? Yeah. That's, yeah. Those guys, that's what those guys did. Well, I, they I mean, had choice, Terry, they had awful grades. Their grades, but then they were like, okay, I'm going to go there, I'm going to build it up, and then I'm going to go. Yeah, Jerry, those guys were fucked up. They didn't. They didn't do well academically. They were not. No, and, not, and not a lot of those guys went on to do anything. So you think you do you think these guys in the, I'm going to portal here. I'm going to portal there. Shit, this isn't uh, Back to the Future. You can't just keep freaking portaling. Stetson and, Bennett did it. Some guys are. Yeah. Where's Stetson, Stetson Bennett? Bennett? Where's Stetson He's Bennett? He's in the NFL now for the Rams. Well, what's Until he, he doing? Holding had some personal flipboard. issues. And that's, that's uh, he's a lot more than of us. Hey, Bo Nix. <laughs> How about Bo Nix? How about Bo Nair? All right. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm telling you, that's the way it's, the way it's going. This is the way it's going. Like, it is. that's going to be the way for the smaller schools to recruit bigger players. Come to my place, start, and you're, you'll start from day one. You'll be a starter. And that's how they're going to get the better players. Yes, sir. Get some film on yourself. Yeah, yes, it's sir. crazy. It's, it's, it's very foreign for all of us. Like, I've never heard any of this shit. It's totally different from anything I've ever heard. But that's the way it's going. So, as Rasheem would say, if I could beat up all the dads in the neighborhood, and then yeah. I can just go back. Is it- that, don't make, that don't make me the heavyweight champ, sis. Oh, okay, okay. It don't. Reggie. Call in. What's Reggie wants to call in? Do we have a number? Uh, I told him we have a text line. All right. Text us, Reggie. Yeah. Yeah. Reggie does his own show. Reggie has the Reggie Mattingly show. He's all Steelers. All Steelers. He does a great job. Oh, I want to hear this. Yes. So I want to hear what he has to say. Uh, uh, He'll probably text us here shortly. You know. Um. We're 79. You know what? Yeah, I don't know. Something must have happened because I sent him a couple messages, and he's really good about getting back to me. So something must have happened. Um, I'm sure I'll get a message later. Something something happened. I got a hole. I got a hole in my glass. I don't know. What's up? We still had fun, right? I mean, come on. Oh, no doubt. It's been a while since I've seen your ugly mugs. So listen, I mean, we'll just switch gears real quick. Okay. (laughs) Say you're the commander's owner. Right? Yeah. Do you think it was smart for him to keep Rivera for the entire season, or do you think you should have got rid of him earlier? I like earlier because that's even that's even with uh like I hate to say go back to the Steelers, but that's even like like getting that, a new coordinator. Like they're all up in Pittsburgh saying you can't bring in a new coordinator right now because you can't make all these changes. I'm saying if you bring in somebody now, you get them ready for next year to be with them. Right. Hey, coach, coordinator, whatever it may be. Even, even that, though, Shane, I think yes, you can you can groom him for that position, but there are so many damn distractions keeping the guy. You know, every every week, like we keep saying about every week with the Steelers, every week with the Commanders, he's a distraction being here because all we're talking about is when are we going to get rid of him? Who are we going to replace him with? It's like. You got to make a move. Uh, as new guys, new guys. So here's my two thoughts. I have two thoughts. I, I one is get rid of them, have the enemy be the head coach, and then you can see what the enemy can do. That's one of them. And the other one's like, you know what? I don't know. Like maybe you keep them, you keep losing, and then your draft draft stock is higher and higher and higher. You get a better pick, and then the enemy doesn't get those losses. So. I don't know. I had mixed feelings. Like maybe you know that he's lost the team, but you don't put that on the enemy. Like, Do you think that's the thing the Steelers did with Tomlin? Why they didn't 
why they didn't go ahead and, and uh, uh, maybe bring in Leftwich. Hey, Reggie says this. Reggie says, hey, man, uh, we're still not out of this. You can't count the Steelers out. I looked at the schedule. Um, you know, the last three games, because of the Ravens, they're not going to start the starters, and they can help us win if we're not seeing their starters. He said, uh, we win that game. Uh, we should be able to get the Bengals. You don't know because that kid's playing good football, Reggie. Who gonna watch and, the and then and then he he says, you know, it's a coin flip up in Seattle. I will say this for you, Reg. I know going to the West Coast has been an Achilles heel for the Steelers, <laughs> but this year they've actually they've actually won a couple games on the West Coast. That's you just an don't my know. Pat, yeah. That's an on my pat. Eh. Yeah, Listen, Reggie, I just met you. I don't believe a damn thing you're saying. Uh, He's optimistic. Yeah. I'm not listen. I'm not mad at Reggie. But so listen, am I. Then I'm going to get another one. Listen, but, but listen, if that if okay. that happens, then that means we're stuck with all these coaches again for next year, and I don't want that. Reggie, this is a dress rehearsal for hey, for Reggie. the running backs coach and in the quarterbacks coach to to hey, be Reggie, there. Reggie, listen, Reggie, look, look, read my lips, Reggie. Go look at the coaching staff we got. It's terrible. Okay? Terrible. Terrible. No. Or, or it's Charles no. Broke, it's say. Terrible. It's terrible. 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 Get out of here, Reggie. Listen. You know, the, the Steelers also have one of the lowest paid and least amount of coaches in the league. Did you yeah, know listen, that? I listen, didn't hear that. I didn't listen, hear that. Reggie. Pete Carroll, I think he's like 90. I was afraid he was going to have a heart attack last night just chewing his gum. That guy <laughs> is – he's so freaking animated. I would run through a brick wall for that 90-year-old. Who am I? Mike Tomlin. He doesn't You're do missing your sunglasses. Fire. He doesn't fire anyone up. He doesn't do anything. Nah. Come on. Pete Carroll. He's Reggie, now that, He's Reggie, that now that you're watching us, huh? what's your thoughts on – give us your thoughts on Tomlin. Do they retain Tomlin? What do they do with Tomlin? Because when you want to go down that street about making the playoffs, you got to think about that. And, and on top of that, what are they going to do if they make it to the playoffs? What are they really going to be able to accomplish? They're not going to be able to beat some of those teams they're going to see in the playoffs. You know, I mean, it's 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 a train wreck in Pittsburgh, and we all thought it was going to be good. I did see somebody grade their free agency today, and um, the average grade that they got in free agency was a D. All those guys they signed that were supposed to be difference makers in depth, none of them really – you know, yeah, they gave Patrick Peterson a D. It stinks. You know, it's yeah, terrible. he just he it's just didn't fit the system. Now, ask Reggie who can go, who can get out of town. Reggie, tell us who can get out of town. Um, you know. Peterson can't catch a cold. He's terrible. He can get out of town. Mason Cole can get out of town. Ma uh, Mason Cole, I'll pack his shit with Tommy. Yeah, I'll drop them both yeah. down the road. Hey, we were high Tyler on him. Mason can get out of town. Uh, we were high. We were high on Cole at the beginning. He just. <laughs> Get out of All here. right, so he said, here's what he says. He okay. says, y'all right, too. He says, if you really think about it, there's really not any real dominant teams in the NFL this year. I mean, because some I'm losing, some are winning. Um, that's why I say playoffs, you just never know. That's nah. what he said, yeah. which is right. He's right. But you never know. But the, I'll tell you one thing the Steelers would get it. I'll but tell I you, know. The I'll tell you know where the Steelers would get exposed. They would get exposed on the D line. At linebacker, and they them. would get exposed at safety. Hands and they down. get exposed at the O line, and they get exposed at the wide receivers. And they get exposed at the offense. Offense. Oh, the o -line. The o -line. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. How many y'all seen the play where they handed the ball to Najee Harris, and there was a hole to the left, and he ran into the crowd and right? Uh, <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Reggie, how old are you? <laughs> Reggie's a grown man. Oh, Reggie. I've don't give Reggie shit. Reggie does a great job on his show, Reggie. I know, I know. Listen, we're not denying Reggie. We love Reggie. We just we, we just busting chops. He, no, nah, he he's yeah. he's a diehard. He's a diehard. He's a diehard. Tell me. He's a diehard. He says O line is the weak link. Too damn conservative, he said. Oh yeah. That's what I hate. Uh all the check downs. Uh, you know, cut the mustard. Can you at least throw the damn ball to the <clears> first down marker? Could you please uh, use the number one receiver they have, a, a play for that guy, which he's right. You know, hey, this is all stuff we've all hey, been saying all year. Listen, 
when did they oh, put yeah. the pile oh, on yeah. at the first down mark? I got excited. We got a fir- we got a touchdown, and then I realized it was a first down. When did Who's they do that receiver? shit? Huh? Who's the number one receiver? Pickett. Pickens. Pickens. His numbers are his numbers are number one receiver numbers. Listen, that's the other thing. Tell Tomlin don't ever take when we win the flip. Don't take the ball. Kick the damn ball off, Tomlin. Pickens is awful. I guess at the end of the day, what, skill wise, at, the, oops. at the end of the day, what really skill solidified wise. to me that the Steelers were were garbage this year was when they were winning thirteen nothing and gave up thirty consecutive points to Indianapolis. Yeah, you know that really that solidified for me that you know it was almost like and you talk about Tommy <laughs> being stoic on the sidelines, he shows no emotion. He really. If yeah, I'm losing it's, by, if I'm concerning. getting destroyed by that, I'm gonna fuck somebody. I'm gonna grab someone's face mask. I'm gonna scream at somebody. I'm gonna show some kind of emotion and try and get something triggered. You, you gotta get him. I mean, it's the nature of the game. I don't expect you to get kicked out. They're like, do something. We can we can play renegade. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, that that fires the shit out of people. Man, please, yeah. that <laughs> Get out of here, man. Shit. Edgar Pop say, eh. <laughs> my, That was my daddy. Eh. What do you want to do that for? <laughs> hey, you know you were up for it when he gave you the double. Eh. <laughs> it wasn't the only the double. Oy. He said, eh. <laughs> All right, Reggie wants to come on with us, y'all. I'm going to send Reggie the link right here. Yeah, right now? Yeah. Hold on, Reggie. the link to another Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll be back. Hold on, Reg. Pickens, come on. That guy, his lack of effort kills me. Tiki, you gonna say hi? Hey, listen, Tiki wants to say hi. Here you go, Reg. I'll be racing it after you get on. Mm, say hi, Tiki. Look, Tiki, you hey, meet the mascot. Fluffy our kid. mascot. We got our mascot here today. There he is, Tiki. What's his name? Tiki. Like Tiki Barber? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. What Big Trey, he left me hanging, boys. That's okay. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll circle okay. back. We'll yeah, I, I I I can almost guarantee you something happened because he yeah. usually he usually hits me back almost hundred uh, percent. Not a big deal. Yep. That was fun. Oh, Reg, where you at, baby? Is Come Reg? On, Reg. In, is he in the studio? Is he in the what's it called? Bring him in. I just sent it to him right here. I said, oh. yeah, it's I right like here. To- is Reggie in Pittsburgh? Reggie, no, I, no, he's not in Pittsburgh. Oh, no, because I got, I got to get, I got to get Pittsburgh media secondhand from my brother. Is he paying attention? Uh, how's Big Mike doing? I'm talking about my older brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, Montel. Okay. Big Reg, where you at, Reg? Rock and red. Man, we're not syndicated yet. I'm not I'm not uh bladder control for this hour and 30 minutes though. He says that's why I had to roll, man. I had to Holy. pee. I was about to pee my pants. Hey, we're right. We're, we're gonna looking, bring Reggie on for about 15. I'm looking for bottles in here. I'm like, my son's gotta have something to go to the bathroom in. I you wash your hands. hands. That's the part I had to roll for a second. I had to did you wash your hands? Drink earlier. You, you you went to the back and you come out with a cat. Like, what's happened with that? I mean, I haven't done that since college. <laughs> He's hanging out watching you guys. <laughs> He's right below the screen. It's funny. He's sizzle. sizzle. What's up? What's the cat's name? Newbie. <laughs> Come here. There he is. There he is. He said you didn't send it. Huh? Reggie. Reggie popped up and said you didn't send it or something. The oh, I sent na- it down. The cat's name is Reggie? He should have it. Oh, no, the cat's not. Please quit feeding him, Barbin. Call somebody. Text Max. No, the, cat, the cat's name is Tiki, as in Tiki, Tiki Barber. Tiki B. Tiki Walker. <laughs> Reggie, where you want me to send it to? You just tell me, kid. Come on, Reg, where you at? Look this guy up. I want to hear what he's got to say. Kind of sucks. We can't talk more commanders. Hey, <laughs> we can. <laughs> we can't, but here's the thing. There's nothing to talk about. They suck. Let's talk about – Hey, Tracy McLaurin, what happened to him? Tracy Terry McLaurin. Who? No, what's McLaurin's first name? Terry McLaurin. Terry. 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 
T Sizzle. Terry McLaurin. Terry. Terry McLaurin. What happened to him? Uh, he went back to Ohio State. They, uh, stop, they just don't throw him the ball. Wait, but considering back to Ohio State, what, seriously, would you not stay for twenty three million if you're uh, Harrison Jr.? He's not making twenty three million. They said his NIL deal, NIL deal would be around twenty three million. Would you not stay? Would be yes. Yeah, no chance they could pay him twenty three million. Isn't that what we read? That's so much money. That's asinine. That's a hell of a hell of a lot of money. Uh, when, I mean, if I was really seriously, if they could guarantee I was making twenty million, I would take it, and I would stay. But. I don't see them being able to pay twenty million. That's a shit ton. How are they going to pay everybody else? That ain't, that ain't our problem. It don't. It don't matter. I'm sorry, we don't have any more money. Boosters would be like, uh, we we can get you a big wheel, but uh, you know we ain't getting you get you a Ram truck. Yeah, we'll get you a lease. We can't buy that for you. Uh, I noticed that they, they not only got they those. Totally got <coughs> they not only got those lease <coughs> trucks for the guys' team, but they got lease trucks for females too. Uh, female basketball team in Utah now. That's cool as shit. Yeah. Good. Yep. Whoever's putting that out, that that's pretty good. Pretty good tax write off, and uh, you know, pretty. That's smart not that power way. from Bowser. Where is Reggie? I just sent him the. I just sent him the link in. Uh, I just sent him the link in, in Facebook Messenger, so okay. he has it now. While we're waiting, and we're not talking about Harrison Jr. anymore, uh, Draymond Green, are we over him? What's the deal? Can he just be excommunicated? He's got a lot of issues. Can he be excommunicated to get mental health from the from the league just right about now? Or does he have a valid point? We talked about the comparison with him and Rodman. What do you guys think? Is Draymond Green the next Rodman? No. Head case, or is he a different yeah. head case? I'm trying to think. Was Rodman who was a better overall? Rodman's a great, <clears throat> a great defender. <clears throat> Rodman, you can deal with that because yeah, he he was he was great at what he did. He was an original too. Like he just there was nobody like Rodman ever. Didn't he? Didn't him and Madonna have a thing? Oh, Rodman had all the fine babes too. Oh yeah, I and Carmen bad. Electra. I, I actually, I should feel bad for Rodman. I think he has some serious. Uh, I don't know. He has some serious issues, like as far as substance abuse and things like that. I, it, he was on. Um, what was the show Trump was on? The one. Uh, you're fired. Yeah, no. yeah. What was that show called? The Apprentice. The Apprentice. Yeah. He yeah. Was on, yeah. Room you guys him on The Apprentice. Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. And there was a bring him in. Bring Reggie in. Train wreck. He He's not on here yet. Oh. I send him the link. I send it to him three different ways. No, what do you say about the apprentice? God damn it, Reggie. So Robin, Robin was a mess, dude. I feel like I was crying. Yeah, I feel bad for him. <laughs> well, she was, his daughter's a hell of an athlete. He's a grown man. Robin? I was reading. I read his uh, biography, yeah. or autobiography, or whatever. He he definitely had that, and um, he sat at the palace at Auburn Hills outside the arena with a shotgun. With a gun. Ready to blow his head off. Yeah, he yeah, definitely it's... had depression, mental health issues, but he was a hell of a player. He went, he went balls out for the team. He was a team-oriented player, and I think, I think Draymond Green is for the most part too. But he just got to control in a different way. You can't be putting people in chokeholds and bitch slapping them <laughs> during the during the during the uh, game. You know, Rodman went up. He he out rebounded everybody and their mother. All right, Joe, what up, Reggie? Baby. Yo, got Reggie. What's up? Reggie Maddox, Lee. Hey, right, this is EMC Reggie Fresh from the EMC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. <clears throat> a diehard still a fan. Okay. Where you where are you living, Reggie? I live in Huntsville, Alabama. There it John is. John Starworth, Alabama AM. <laughs> okay. Listen, y'all hilarious, man. <laughs> How, how'd you get us? No, I just seen you live. When I see stuff with Steelers, I go on and join in. That's good. So, so break it down for us, Reggie. Break let it me down. break it down for y'all, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get my pen. Let me get my pencil ready. <laughs> <laughs> Look, number one, 
There is no dominant teams in the NFL, as y'all can see. You talk about Dallas, mm -mm. 49ers, they mm -hmm. losing. Ooh. You got to be consistent. Sometimes I think people are just playing for the money. But now, as far as the Pittsburgh Steelers, this is not the Pittsburgh way. Fans is getting tired of going and spending all this money to watch us lose the way we lose. Okay. We play down to the competition. Yeah, we've been doing that. And it's terrible. It makes me sick to my stomach to sit here and watch you throw a pass on second and 20. I mean, hand it off on second and 24. Ridiculous. Yeah. Najee should not be the starter, period. Warren should be the starter. He's the, matter of fact, he's the guy, he's the spark of the team, period. He is. Give I him agree. the ball. He going to get one yard. When we ain't even no offensive coordinators, and we don't get paid like they would get to make them stupid-ass calls. It's ridiculous. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it's so, it's so bad you had to move to Alabama. I understand. It's really, really bad. It's unfortunate. And and we're we're, we're sympathizing with you, brother. Well, listen, I, 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 I've been in the Pittsburgh a lot. Man, I catch too many heels. You're going to have transmission problems up there. <laughs> I can't do it. You got the potholes in transmission. Hey, he ain't lying. One of my regal did slip. <laughs> yeah. But Reggie, listen. how you fix everything? Yeah, how, do how do you fix it? You clean house. That's what you do. This is what I need Mike Tomlin to do. Mike's a great coach. He shows enthusiasm in the locker room, but sometimes you got to get it out on the field. But he's a, he let people do their job. That's why he don't say nothing. Just like oh. if you hired me, why did you hire me if you got to keep coming to me when I do something wrong? Number one. But I need Mike to go on and step down before he do get fired and it's mm. going to mess him all up. That's just about, my opinion. Because about, right now, he's good. I'm tired of a winning record. We need a damn Super Bowl. It's time. See, I didn't run out of excuses for Mike Tomlin. I didn't run out of excuses. Great coach. But when you lose back-to-back -back games to a 2 and ten team at home, we got a problem. And you only got three games to fix it. Don't get fired in the course of that. I need you to say, hey, look, let somebody else come on in. I had a great run with the Steelers, two appearance, one Super Bowl ring, and I'm out. Because I know what's going to happen. Trust me. What's going to happen? He's going to get fired. Yeah. So, hey, Reggie, would you would you trade him? Would you try and trade him to another franchise? If no, and who would you trade him, him to? No, I just tell him he's going to step down, and that's what he should do. But here's one thing, though. Mike would get picked up easy by any other body. I guarantee you that. Or would you promote him and bring someone else in? Yeah, I'll promote him to do that. But you know what? I just try to – what I do is I try to be nice about it. Like, look. Go on and just step down so we don't have no breaking news or none of that. I would do like, he should do like Flacco did with the Ravens. Let me explain to you. The minute they got Lamar Jackson, Flacco knew he was going to get replaced. He knew that. So he got hurt a little bit, had an injury, <laughs> eased on out to Broncos, and nobody said nothing because that's the way he did it. Now he's the comeback player of the year. Yeah, but see, listen, <laughs> if Black go had to stay, it would have been a conflict because he was going to take his job. Uh, and I don't even know why we let him go. We had a chance to pick Lamar up. That was stupid enough to put Lamar on our team. Yeah, Duh, you had a chance so to get Mahomes. Huh? They, had a, they had a chance to get Mahomes. You know, you know, Tomlin sat down. Tomlin had dinner with him. Tomlin – had him in Pittsburgh to visit with him and do yep. his, you know, they did everything. They love Mahomes. Yeah, and they, they even went walk. to Louisville and watched Lamar, too. Mm. So, I'm a I'm Louisville just fan they didn't take Malik Willis. Yeah, but we need we need a quarterback, too, y'all. Why is all these other teams getting great quarterbacks? We ain't got Rudolph, not the answer. He didn't have his chance. He sucks. Trubisky. <laughs> 
horrible. Pickens, he's the best that we got, but he ain't no good neither. My thing is, all the damn quarterbacks, we couldn't get no quarterback, not even good backup. Charlie Bass can come out of retirement and play better than all three of them. CB3, yeah, yeah, boy. We sure got Jacoby Brissett. Boy. He's retired. We should have got him there last year to, put, to come in as a backup. He retired. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, let me ask you something. So all of y'all still a fans? Yeah. Everybody but noobs. Noobs is a commander guy. In the middle there, yeah. Okay. So let me ask y'all this. Uh, anybody played football before? Every one of us. Yeah. They let me on once. Yeah. <laughs> and anybody go to the pro levels? No. No. Not me. Just call. But listen, do, is anybody friends with any football players, whether they form or now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, check it out. I made a song, and whoever can do this for me, they going to get paid swell. 12 what? I made a song about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now listen, I made a song about the Pittsburgh Steelers for Super Bowl 40. I sold a lot of copies, right? It's about everybody on that team. I got to find a player that's on the team that's willing to back it up because it's a great song. When they came out with Black and Yellow, I was sick because my song better than that. Super Bowl 40. You got it? Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's called Pittsburgh Style. We're going to have to hit that one up. Yeah, Pittsburgh. not listen, man. You know Pittsburgh Steelers buy anything when it comes to Steelers. They're going to buy it. Well, Super so, Bowl 40 has been a while. But it don't matter. It's still good, just like the rings. It don't matter. People still can put that the way I got the CD made. They're still added to their collection. You got the names in it, though? Yeah, everybody on that team is on that song. Well, well, it's not good now because those those guys have been gone. But I'm just saying, if you knew somebody who was on that team, that's what I'm saying. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to find, trying to find the rock. You may call Chad Brown up and ask him if you buy it. Chad okay. Brown play. <laughs> How about I'm Chad Scott? Play. Chad Scott. He's down yeah, in. Uh, oh, Charlie. Right Charlie played. Charlie was there. Yes. Charlie Batch. Yeah, Charlie Batch. Well, see, I'm just saying, I don't. I don't, I'm not free. I don't have players on my radio show, but I don't ask them because, you know. All right. We'll have to go in neutral. We'll, we'll, we'll send it out and you send us some crawfish and we'll okay. call it we'll call All a bet. right. We'll do that. All, All right. right. You, you drive safely there now. Hey, man. I appreciate y'all letting me on, man. Absolutely, Reggie. We'd love to have you back. Hit me All up right. anytime. I yes, sir. Love you. your show. Yeah. Love you too. Take care, Reggie. Yes, sir. Peace. Reggie, oh, down shit. south, baby. All right, roll tide. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, we got a big show coming up on Saturday. And I told y'all, uh, Trey hit me up. Trey let me know. He was at a Steeler event, and it ran over. And, was um, it a black and gold event? Yeah, we will have him on. He, he guaranteed me we will have him on. But he was at a Steeler event that ran over. He didn't anticipate it being that long. So, uh, fellas, it, it was still a pretty good show, y'all. Uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday. We'll kick some things around we want to talk about Saturday. And um, I'm sure there will be plenty for us to talk about. And we're just going to have to keep Young in check. Um, what? Yeah, you know, we got you, Young. Hey, Young and Peaky. Got to keep Peaky out, out of the picture. Reggie, it was great having you. But what, so, do I scream as much as him? <laughs> Reggie was pumped up. How about that? Uh, I like well, having I Reggie pumped. Pittsburgh style. He's at Pittsburgh style, right? Yep. Yes. I'm going to look yeah. it up. Don't worry. I don't see anything. I don't see it. Damn. It's I got you. Um, did you say keep me in check for what? Oh, all that bourbon. Listen. We'll, we'll do some bourbon sampling. Tis the season. That Tis the it. sizzle. Tis the sizzle. Tis the sizzle. Man, go ahead and tell them where they can find you, please. On Young Terry on the whoa, X. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. We got to end. We got to end. This is, end this is with the outro. outro. What the hell yeah, are you doing? Right. Oh, he got yeah. something good for us here. Oh. And I always ask the question. The trivia. Okay. Favorite here we go. sports movie, gentlemen. What's your favorite sports movie? Ooh. The program. Ooh, good one. The program. 
Jesus. Young, what you got? I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, Field of Dreams. Oh, come on, Sizzle. <laughs> look, uh, you, don't you say look, fucking Rudy. If you say Rudy, I lost all respect for you. It, it wasn't Rudy. Right. What did I tell you about that girl from up at Shepherd or wherever she played? That girl was Rudy. Yeah. I'm uh, telling you, we watched Rudy. It was the funniest shit ever. We watched that shit in golf. Uh, our whole fucking team went to go see that shit. And <laughs> we were laughing our ass off. We were like, that fucking thing. There's no way that <laughs> Favorite sport? I, Why? I, see, here's the thing about movies. I got remember the Titans. Watch so many. Oh, that's a good. So one. Do you have one or not? Yes or no? Did you say remember the tight ass? I did. <laughs> I've seen that one. Pause. <laughs> do you have one or not? Uh, I don't got a favorite. All right, forget you. The fish that saved Pittsburgh. Ooh, Doctor J. And, awesome Mr. Hyde, and Mr. Hyde. Can I tell yeah. you guys a funny story about Rudy real quick? Go ahead, noobs. <laughs> All right. So we're in college. Lock them. <laughs> Listen, we were in college, and the coach call, the co our coach Dooley, it was actually Coach Dooley at the time, was like, all right, what movie are we going to watch? And we would all vote on the movie we would watch on, on Friday night before the Saturday game because we'd always fly over, get there Friday, right. watch a movie Friday night. So he would rent out a movie theater, and we'd watch it. So – Voted on Rudy. Everyone picked Rudy or whatever. So we're watching Rudy. We're watching it. And Notre Dame plays against Georgia Tech. Well, one of our D linemen, his dad started at Georgia Tech. He was an offensive lineman. So my my roommate, Rhett, who was fucking funny as shit, his, his uh, Rhett's grandfather was um, won the Heisman Trophy <clears throat> at Army. He was one of the, the horsemen oh, or whatever. Mantra. Or whatever. Anyway, get back to the thing. He's like, Rick's dad gave up a sack to Rudy because Georgia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> and Rick was so fucking mad. Rick looked like Superman. He had like his hair was perfect. He fucking looked like Superman. He was like, Rick's dad gave up the sack to Rudy. And he was like, shut up, man. People are going to believe that. Shut the fuck up. He got so fucking bitter. He was. But tight the whole weekend about that shit. It was so fucking funny. You At the end of the day, was it his dad? It wasn't his dad, but that's oh, fucking hilarious that his dad hey, plays. Let's run the picket fences. That's hilarious. I think Hoosiers might might be one of my favorites. Okay. Hoosiers. Jimmy Chipowich. Jimmy Chipowich. He got mental issues. All right, hey. fellas. Give, give, we're give White back. Shadow. White Shadow favorite TV sports show. Hey, Machine, I got one more for you. The Bad News Bears. Oh, oh, the old O'Neill. One, two, three, four. Yeah, when they played the Astro No, hey, that was breaking training. Yeah, at one young Terry Let on the die. X and Instagram. Let's yes, go. Yes, Where can they find you, Noob? At Coach Noob. Twitter and Instagram. Let's go. Right there. Oh. Double M, where can they find you, Double M? Me? You can find me on our webpage, podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday. You can find us on Facebook. You can join our conversation on Twitter. You can check us out on Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, and all this shit's on YouTube after we're done with it. It's been a great show. We've had people, people watching all night. Y'all, I want to apologize for Trey not being able to make it. Um, He did send me a message. He had a Steeler event. He thought he would be home early enough that he'd get to it, but he didn't. So he's rescheduled with us. He's a good dude. I promise you we will have Trey on, and he will talk candid. All right. Good shit. Candid and blue. Wait till Saturday. Candid blue. Yeah, Saturday, everybody, Dude. at noon, holiday cheer, the OSP with the BSC style. Take care. Peace, Peace. brother.